Hello and welcome to this week's episode of Nat Chat. I'm Amber Hardman and today I'm joined by John Leonard. Uh, John just recently went around South America for 40 days with his video camera and um, today he's brought in some footage um, for us to have a look at. Welcome to Nat Chat, John. Thank you very much, Amber. Now, how long ago did you go to South America? This is a recent trip. Well, um, it was probably about nine months ago. Um, prior to, obviously I'm from the UK, you may have mm -hmm. guessed uh, by my accent, but prior to me coming to Australia to live, my wife and I, we actually toured South America for 40 days and also North America. Now, where, whereabouts did you go in um, South America? Essentially, we went from the East Coast through to the West Coast. We started off at Rio de Janeiro um, and end, ended in Lima. Fantastic. What made you pick South America as a country to travel to? Well, it's here that I should really give full credit to my wife, who did a lot of the research initially. But I think we both wanted to go to a third world country. Uh, we'd done a lot of travelling in the past, and um, we just really wanted to have a rustic experience. Um, I think that was the main reason why. Excellent. How did you prepare for um, a trip like this? You know, 40 days is quite a, lo a long amount of time, yeah. so how did you prepare for a, a trip like this? Well, it's worth mentioning we chose to go on a tour, so the tour operator had specific guidelines as to what to bring, but uh, primarily what we were told was we had whatever we were to bring along had to be in a rucksack. You know, you couldn't uh, bring additional um, suitcases with you and umbrellas and things like that. You had to be able to carry what you brought on your back. So you're literally travelling around with your, your life on your back? Yeah, essentially. In, um, in regards yeah. to the footage that you're taking then, what, what kind of equipment did you take with you? If you've only got a backpack, um, what were you uh, shooting with? Uh, what I shot with was a, a digital camcorder, which was given to me by my mother-in-law. And also I took a dictaphone uh, with me because I'm certainly not disciplined enough to actually write a diary. Mm -hmm. So I dictated my experience on a day-to-day -day basis and had the tape typed up when I returned to Australia. And I think it uh, produced 28,000 words and 28 pages. <laughs> wow. So, yeah. And so that, that was um, uh, for the audio. How, how, much, um, how many hours of footage do you think that you took on your trip? Oh, I can hear Jada, my wife, sighing as I say this, but I think I must have had about five hours of footage. Oh, fantastic. So. And so in, in regards to um, where you travel, wh which was the first destination that you stopped off at? We arrived at Rio de Janeiro, yes. uh, where we met our tour. There are about ten of us in the tour. We went from there through to... Perhaps the most notable first place we visited was the Iguazu Falls, which is on the border of Argentina and Brazil. And I think actually the, um, the destination has been shortlisted for the new Seven Wonders of the World list. Uh, it was that beautiful. Uh, it comprises about 265 waterfalls falling 267 feet into a gorge below. How amazing. Um, how, do you, um, how did you access those waterfalls? Well, we actually took a helicopter ride over the falls themselves, which was very exciting. And we took a speedboat ride along the river up to the mouth of the waterfalls and actually went underneath. Oh, amazing. So, yeah. Fantastic. And so what was the next stop after um, the Iguazu Falls? We visited 22 notable towns oh, or wow. cities. Lake Titicaca in Bolivia and Peru uh, is the highest navigable lake in the world. And we spent a night on one of the islands there, staying with the indigenous Indian people, um, which was quite a belittling experience because these people are very poor. Yeah. And we stayed in their mud huts and lived their way of life for about two days. Oh, that would have been very humbly. How did, it, how did um, the Indigenous people receive you? Well, I think uh, it's quite well organised now and they've got used to doing this because our tour operator actually uh, organised with them, I think, a, a payment and the method for doing these short stays. So we took a boat to the island uh, and they're all lined up and we were greeted by our mother, um, in inverted commas, and... Um, we basically live with the family. Uh, you'll see from some of the footage that uh, 
w the families were quite young, um, which is wonderful to be able to experience the effects of children. They're very entertaining people. And so you, you talked about it was a, it was a humbling experience. Mm. W what do you think um, those differences are between our, our cultures? Well, I think it's um, it all boils down to money, really, mm. and convenience. Uh, for instance, if I want a coffee, uh, I go straight to a coffee uh, a bar in town and I have a coffee. If I want something to eat, I will go to a restaurant and buy a, uh, something to eat. But here, um, it's different. It's really quite primitive. And they would have to go out and hunt for what they wanted to eat, to fish, to grow their own vegetables, um, to make their own houses. Um, I know we construct ours, but they don't have the, the uh, industries out there to provide for them. Were there any scary moments on your trip? Yes, there were. Aside from swimming in uh, piranha-infested waters, <laughs> we didn't know at the time, there's one moment in particular that... Um, I recall our tour guide was so concerned at the border of one country that the corrupt border control guards would take his money, uh, i.e. the money he collected from us um, tour candidates, that he actually entrusted me to take this money and he instructed all of us uh, to pretend they didn't know him, pretend that we had all just met and we were just travelling together because he, he feared that if the border control police knew he was a tour operator, they'd know he had a lot of money on him and they would literally bribe him. And that was quite a scary moment for me. I'm sure it was. Because if they found the money on me, what would they have done? Yeah, definitely. Thank you, John. We're just going to take a quick break now. You're watching Nat Chat with Amber Hartman and we'll be back after this break.